Hey guys and gals, in this video I'm going to be talking about Meetup Pro and is it worth it? So for those of you who don't know, Meetup Pro is a premium product from Meetup that allows you to build basically like a chaptered organization for your Meetup. So you could have potentially chapter leaders all over the world hosting events um, for your brand. This could work for any kind of company, agency, any kind of brand really, or maybe you've got a meetup that does really well in your city and you want to expand it out to other cities. Maybe you have friends in another city that wish that your meetup was there and they say, hey, I'll, I can organize this. I'll put this together for you as well. So I think it's a great product. It's a great idea. And um, uh, I haven't really seen any other products out there that can kind of help you do kind of what Meetup Pro does. Uh, Meetup is a platform for creating a community of people who meet up in the real world and get together and do activities or learning or just make friends. So it's really cool. Uh, Meetup actually has a really cool uh, founder story. I'll let you guys look that up afterwards if you're interested. But it actually came after the wake of 9-11. So it's kind of an interesting story how it all came together. And, and I think it's really the most underutilized social media platform and it's been going through a lot of changes recently. Um, uh, a few months back, almost a year ago now, they were uh, sold to WeWork. And WeWork is a, uh, a I, th I believe it's like a multi-billion dollar co-working network. Uh, they got locations all over the world. And, and now if you actually have a meetup, you can actually host your meetup in, in a WeWork location, which is really cool. And very recently, uh, they got a new CEO. Uh, so I think that Meetup has a lot of potential uh, for the future. Um, right now, the product of Meetup Pro is kind of you know what they're what they're pushing forward towards. So I want to talk to you about it. If you're a Meetup organizer or you're thinking about creating a chapter organization, I want to share with you my experience over the last four months and help you decide for yourself whether or not you think it's worth it. So. Typically, meetup cost, um, and I, I believe this is different in different currencies. I think it's um, fifteen dollars per month if you just have a regular meetup account, and uh, you could have up to three meetups in your one account. After that, if you want to add more meetups in a regular account without the pro features, it's an additional ten dollars per month per meetup. All right, meetup pro starts at thirty dollars per group per month, okay? Now, these are all in US dollars. I'm in Canada. I believe I actually pay $35 Canadian, something like that, for um, per group, per month, all right? So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna share with you the features, the back end, some screenshots. I'm actually gonna get, go into the analytics feature and show you that. I'm gonna share with you my experience with it, the pros and the cons, and my plans on growing a chaptered organization where my goal is to get 100 chapters um, over the next year, between now and uh, 2020. So um, I've done a ton of research into how to implement the strategy and how to go forward with this, and I've got a lot of ideas around this. So if, if you're finding value from this video or you're a meetup organizer and you say, yes, I wish these features, which I'll suggest in a moment, I wish they existed, I would love for you to tweet um, uh, you know, maybe message on LinkedIn, people you know from Meetup who work at Meetup, the CEO of Meetup. And, and I'm sorry, David, but I'm going to be putting in, uh, in the description of this video, uh, links to people who you can contact either through Twitter or LinkedIn or other resources that I might find. Share this video with them. Tell them what you like or don't like about some of my suggestions, because I think that if we all kind of come together, we can help meet up know kind of we know what we really need to build these communities and and if you're a business you know how to also potentially profit from growing these communities as well now one thing i'm a big believer in is bringing people together um, for the purpose of creating value for them what i don't do is bring people together just to sell them stuff so just so you know i'm i, I don't do that but our group is called Internet Masterminds, and it's, uh, it's a group where we get together and we share uh, internet marketing strategies. So we find local experts, local speakers to come in and, and share their story of something they did, something they were successful at. All right, so is Meetup Pro worth it? So Meetup Pro um, 
offers um, these features here for 30 bucks a month, all right? So what you get is you get a network profile. I'll show you what that is in a moment. You get network analytics, you get network emails. That's both being able to send emails through your network as well as collect actual email addresses, which is not available if you're not a pro member. You can't get email addresses of your users uh, natively through Meetup. Um, you also get a, me a members directory and search. I'll talk a bit about that afterwards. You get this feature called templates, which again, I'll talk about that in a moment, and you get to manage multiple groups, all right? So let me go through each one of these individually, and then afterwards I'm gonna share with you which features that I wish Meetup Pro offered and that I think would make it worth 30 bucks a month. So the first thing here is your network profile. So what you get is you get a page that looks like this, right? And on this page, um, there is a map with pins, for all of your locations, the total number of members you have, how many groups you have, and how many countries you're in. It is actually a really cool page to direct people in. Um, over the last four months that I've had this, I've been, you know, as I chat with people, or I try to find speakers, I send them to this page that it shows a lot of social proof, right? It shows, hey, we got a lot of members, we got a lot of groups. It's a great page to have. This is a valuable asset. I think this is great to have as a, as a Meetup Pro organizer. Um, if you scroll down on this page, it has a list of all your upcoming events and all of your groups as well. So it's cool. I really like the network profile. The next thing is network analytics. So. What's interesting about analytics, and I'm actually going to go and show you the analytics page, but I actually found that the data here was was inaccurate, and some of the other stats they give you just uh, don't give you enough information. So let me show you as an example. So here I am on the network analytics page, and one thing I noted is, you know, it does say data refreshes every 24 hours. I did notice that I, I guess I got 10 more members over the last day, but I don't think I did. But when I actually looked at my... Um, my actual page. I don't know how to get there right now, but anyways, this this stat itself was off. But here was the other thing too, is that this says here that I have 10,580 members, even though it says right above that, that um, I only have 9,895. So this graph is off, and this graph here says I have 20,000 RCPs in the last 90 days. So that is also off, all right? Um, but here was the other thing. So this new members, I'm, I'm, I based some stats, which I will share with you afterwards. What's interesting, or what's kind of not interesting, but kind of silly about this, is it doesn't give me, when I go in here and I filtered over the last 12 weeks, as an example, I had to manually go and count all of these numbers. It doesn't give me the total, right? Like new members, it just say right here, how many new members came in that time period if I want to know. I have to literally manually count it. So imagine I was trying to get a, a six month you know, spread. How many new members did we get over the last six months? I would have to actually manually count it. Same with the RCPs. It doesn't give you a total number, kind of silly. Um, and then um, that's it right here, some other data that I don't know what the what even, data sync since last event. I don't even know what that's about. But, I, you know, I find this this information is actually inaccurate. Um, uh, and so maybe not reliable. I'm not sure what's going on here. So meet up if you're watching this. I think there are some issues here with the with the data. All right. So that was network analytics. Uh, I'm going to give this a thumbs down. Although when I was uh, finding some stats for this video, I did use network analytics to find some stats. Prior to that, this was useless to me. I'd, I'd never gone in here, I never really cared. They do send you some emails about how many new members you're getting, but I mean, you could just look at your groups and, and, and kind of count in a way. I, I don't know, I guess it's okay. I'll give it a, I don't know, a two, two out of five stars on network analytics. I think it could definitely be improved. Um, okay, network emails. So this is one of the key features. This is actually what made me decide to sign up to Meetup Pro was this feature alone was that you can uh, email through Meetup all of your members at one time. And 
And so I can also choose which groups I want to email, email them all at the same time. So this is obviously very beneficial if you're doing uh, promotions or sponsorship. Uh, you want to like, you get a new sponsor, you want to um, help get some exposure or you're doing online events and you want to maybe send an email out to all your members, let them know there's an online event going on that everyone can participate in. Um, so it's really cool. But the downside um, to sending emails through through here, there's a few. Um, one is the formatting of the text. All you could do is use italics, bold, and put in a link. Um, if you want to add an image or you want to change the colors of the text or use some different fonts, I actually found that it was actually better to just email through Gmail. And I'll talk about that in just one second. And the other part is when you use a subject line here, um, it actually puts like, it says like new message from Meetup internet masterminds like at the front of your subject line therefore your subject line is not really seen it's more of like a title on the top of your email it also formats your email so it looks like a newsletter from meetup versus looking like a raw email so in terms of open rates and click-through rates and all that they don't even give you any stats on that but I have found that emailing our group has been a lot less effective um, ever since that change. And that's not just on Pro, that's across all of Meetup. They removed the ability to have custom subject lines, which I think is a really poor choice and uh, does not help <laughs> Meetup organizers, but I'm, I'm not gonna complain in this video. I'm just gonna share with you the facts. Now, the other option, this is what I just started doing, and this is actually better, is if you just have a regular meetup, you're not even a pro user, there's a, a section in your settings called optional features and you have this mailing list, right? So if you have a mailing list and it's turned on, this top email, it says internet masterminds list at meetup.com is if any one of your members, if this was turned on, okay, allow all members to send messages. If this was turned on and by default it is turned on, any member who emails this email list who's a member of your meetup will send an email to all of your members. So this is like a huge vulnerability in being able to spam meetup groups because as you could see the the email address is just the URL like my the URL of my meetup is internet-masterminds and then it's just dash list at meetup.com. So I'm sharing with this with you because I'm hoping that meetup could just not make this a default option or I don't even I think this is just a bad feature in general. However, the, the next email below it, which is called the announcements email, if you as an organizer send an email through your Gmail or whatever you're using, Outlook, Hotmail, doesn't matter. If you use the email address associated to your meetup um, account uh, for the group that you organize and you send it to you, you know your, this announcements email address, you'll send an email, Just it'll actually process it through meetup so you still don't get the custom subject line all right um, but you could format the email you could add images as long as they're under two megabytes you could change the color of your text you could do different stuff right you can make it look a lot better your emails itself so if you're running multiple groups you can go to multiple all your groups and snag this email address and just you know cc or bcc them all inside of one email and just send an email out right so that kind of help to you know you don't really need to use meetup pro and now that i'm using gmail to send emails um i again don't i'm not even sending the emails through meetup pro or through the meetup website the other thing you could do as well if you're using gmail is you could use something like boomerang or other plugins for gmail to schedule emails and i think that's another thing that meetup should have and i'll talk about that is being the ability to schedule emails to say hey you guys should come to the event and Whatever, you know, like I, for me, I have to manually, you know, send out the emails at the times that I, I think that people are most active, which is usually in the mornings between 8 a.m. And, and 12 p.m. And if I miss that timing and it's like five o'clock, well, I, I got to, you know, send the email out the next day. So scheduling emails is really important to me as well, which is, again, why I just started emailing through Gmail. All right. So as per network emails, sending out emails through Meetup, I give this one a thumbs down. All right. But the other part of network emails when you're a pro user is that you can collect the email addresses of your members. If you're not a pro user, you do not get the email addresses from your members. 
However, the way that it works, and this is actually new, actually, this is actually, um, I think they just changed this recently as I was trying to get the screenshot for this to show you what it looked like. I realized it actually changed how this works. Before, there used to be a, a notification that would come up from the top of your screen that says, hey, this meetup is a meetup pro user. Would you like to give your email address to the organizer? And then you would click the button and I guess it would send the email address or put the email address into your account, right? And by the way, I should kind of back up a little bit. They only integrate with MailChimp, all right? So Meetup only integrates with MailChimp. There's no Zapier connection. So you could create a free Meetup account and then connect Meetup through Zapier to your other email provider. I use ActiveCampaign. I actually never did that. Um, the other way you could do it is you could actually export a CSV file of all your members, find all the email addresses, and then manually import them into anything you're using. Anyways, let me let me uh, continue here. So now the way they've changed it is when you RCP, it actually asks, it actually tells you you're going to be giving your email address to the organizer, which is cool. That means that every person who RCPs, boom, you get their email address. And I actually think this is a great feature. And really, I think this should not be a pro feature. I think that this was a huge benefit. That if this was available to all Meetup organizers, more people. I believe would start using Meetup because it, it'll be a way to help build your email list. And of course, we all want to be able to own our data. I also understand why Meetup wouldn't want to give email addresses away. I think it's great. They're being very transparent for the user to make sure that they know they're giving their email address out. Um, I think it'd also be good for people to have the option to not give their email address. I think that's okay too. I really only want people on my email list that want to be there, um, so I think that's important. However, I do think that this should not have to be a pro feature. I think this should just every meetup out there should be able to do this. It makes sense. You're doing an event, you know, they're they're becoming you know part of your community. You should be able to get their email address. So um, I actually went in and I, I pulled the stats on this to find out how many emails we're actually collecting through Meetup, through Meetup Pro, and I found some interesting stats. So I started Meetup Pro uh, four months ago, and since then we've grown by 659 new members. We set up a new chapter out of Mexico, and most of those new members are from the new chapter in Mexico. One big benefit of Meetup over every other event or ticketing platform is that Meetup helps you get members to your Meetup. So you add topics of what your Meetup's about. Every user suggests topics they're interested in, and if those two match, they get emails and notifications and so on that there's a Meetup in their area that they might be interested in, right? So I think that's a really great feature of Meetup and, and two huge thumbs up for that. So when we set up a, a new uh, new chapter, you know, we, we got three or 400 new members in, in the first uh, couple months, so that was great. All right, so through that, we ended up getting 224 emails captured through Meetup, all right? But then I realized that we actually had a total, and this is, I looked at the analytics, of 267 RCPs. So basically, I've now learned that when people were RCPing, it was we were getting their email address as they were RCPing. So there's probably some people who RCPed maybe more than once, I suppose. I'm not sure why these numbers aren't um, exactly aligned. Um, it could also be if somebody maybe does like a, you know, they add plus five or plus two or whatever to that RCP. That could be the other reason why, right? However, we charge for our meetups. We actually charge $10 for a ticket and then we slowly raise the price up. It goes from $10 initially to $20, then to $35 and then to $50 at the door. This actually helps to get people to your events. If you do free events, about half the people won't show up. So when you have a venue and you've got a certain capacity and you wanna fill it, uh, selling tickets is much better. When you sell tickets, 10 to 20% also don't show up. However, I do recommend that you charge even just a nominal fee for your meetup also will help you you know pay for the venue or whatever else you want to do uh, we, we even sometimes take everybody to the bar and buy everybody drinks and so on so we're not really trying to make a whole lot of money from our events we're just trying to put on great experiences and have the budget to be able to do that and get nice venues and you know and so on right so through this you know when we when we're charging for a ticket we're also getting the users not only their email address, but their full name. We get the whole contact record. Plus now we have emails of buyers, not just people who RCP'd. 
And the numbers are almost exactly the same. I mean, there was 224 emails captured through Meetup, uh, but so far there's been a little over 220 tickets sold. There was a whole bunch that I, I used through, I put a link in the description to go and actually buy a ticket. And then also we list our event on Eventbrite and there was a few more tickets that were sold through Eventbrite. That's why I kind of put 220 plus. I think there's probably a, you know between 220 to 230 tickets that were sold. So we basically got you know this is almost the same amount if not the same amount of email addresses captured just by charging for tickets right that made the whole um you know paying for pro to get email addresses kind of useless right so that benefit thumbs down i don't think it was that valuable now there was a members directory search this is kind of cool you could find active users people by location how many times they rsvp'd i could see this potentially being good um, in the future, I think it's good to have this, uh, uh, you know, as a, as a pro member, even just as a regular member, I think it's okay, it's good. Besides that, I don't, you know, it's not super, super valuable, so I'm not sure about this one. Then there is templates, so this is where you can create like an event template that all your chapters or all your chapter leaders could use for their events. Uh, this is okay. I, I, I kind of find this pointless. We do have chapter uh, templates for events, but I just use a Google Doc and I just give access to a Google Doc and they could just copy and paste and put it in. And there's not a whole lot of value here in terms of this because you also you can't adjust all the settings for the event itself. Like you can't add an image and stuff. It's just the text of the, of the event. So it's kind of pointless. I don't really see the point of this, to be honest. Yeah, maybe other people find this valuable. I just didn't see the point of it. Um, and then you can manage multiple groups, which is good. I mean, you could add groups, have all your groups here, but I mean, there's nothing really special. I mean, I guess when we have a hundred chapters, that's where you know this data might come in more handy. Besides that, wasn't um, you know this is not a hugely valuable uh, resource right now, but definitely is good to have. Here's my suggestions, and this is for Meetup and anyone else who has suggestions, please leave a comment below. Um, you know, and hopefully if you guys can share this video with people from Meetup, they could see this and hopefully they could take this into account. Some of these suggestions, what I, where I think would make Meetup Pro worth it. So the first thing is you gotta cap the pricing at $30 per month per Meetup or per you know chapter that we have. You know, I wanna get to, for example, 100 chapters that's gonna cost me, you know, three thousand dollars per month, and we're talking. I'm in Canada. It's U.S. dollars. That's like thirty-five hundred or almost four thousand dollars Canadian per month. It's a lot, and I can imagine, like for us, we have a revenue model built in, so I imagine that we would not lose money. But once we start having meetups become stagnant or stop hosting events for a while or whatever, it all just becomes hard cost. And I imagine other people who want to build meetups and chapters might not even be charging for their events. They might be more about getting families together. I see there's groups about bringing fathers together. So they might not even be making a lot of money. And again, if they take a break or a hiatus, all of it just becomes hard cost. So I have a few recommendations around pricing. One is I believe that there should be an unlimited amount of groups option, maybe at like 500 bucks per month. I think that would be okay and reasonable. If that was an option, boom, I'd be in and I'd feel safe being part of the Meetup Pro network. Um, otherwise, I just feel like it's just gonna get too much if we have too many chapters, right? I was looking at, um, I've talked to people like Startup Grind. They have 350 chapters. If they were using Meetup Pro, it's like right away, it's over $10,000 per month, right? I have another friend of mine who already has, I think he had like 30 chapters on Meetup and I asked him why he doesn't use Meetup Pro and I was telling him, oh, Meetup Pro is great. You can email everybody at once. You get this network page. I was trying to sell him on the idea of it and he said, Matt, we have 30 chapters. So he's just not using it. So I think there needs to be a cap. The other thing was, you know, when I was first kind of doing this and I want to launch chapters, what I really wanted to do was set up chapters in various cities, let the chapter grow. And then as people join the chapter, I could send an email and say, hey, I'm looking for a chapter leader to help lead this chapter. So it would be great to not charge for a chapter until it reaches a certain amount of members. I was thinking like 100 members or 300 members before actually charging a monthly fee for it or not charging until the first event is posted, right? So that way someone can help kind of, you know, build up the chapter, see if there's going to be, you know, a good... Um, 
a good amount of people who want to be a part of that group in that city, and then they could choose to launch the first event and at that point start charging them the monthly fee. So those are my recommendations. That If that, those features were available when I first started, I would have just set up like 10 chapters right away, let them grow, and then found chapter leaders from people who joined the group that would have helped me find chapter leaders that way. Okay, uh, better email little analytics and integrations. This is probably the number one feature request I think that should just come to meet up is I need to know how many people are still subscribed to our newsletter. We have no idea how many people are actually getting our emails at all. We don't know our open rates. We don't know our click-through rates. We don't know our subscribes or complaints. I'm not getting any feedback. I'm sending emails blind and it's, it's reducing the quality of the emails that I could send. If I knew that people didn't like long emails or they didn't like the really short, hey, go here and RCP, you know. And oftentimes what happens is people will respond to the emails and complain saying, can you unsubscribe me? Because they can't even figure out how to unsubscribe. Because when they click on the email preferences link, which is very hidden in the email in the first place, very hard to see. And when they click on that, it takes them to a meetup where they have to log in. And then people don't know their login at all. Um, and, uh, and then they just complain to me. And then they ask me to unsubscribe them. And I can't unsubscribe them. I can't change their email notifications. Only thing I could do is remove them as a member altogether. So that's a very poor email marketing experience. I mean, I'm... You know, I'm getting in trouble from it for my users, right? And the other one is integrations, right? I mean, especially for pro users, I mean, at least have a Zapier integration so that way we can integrate with our various other CRM platforms, not just MailChimp, uh, you know, ActiveCampaign, Infusionsoft, a lot of these bigger companies are going to be using more advanced systems than MailChimp. All right, and then build a better ticketing platform, right? Like right now, the only thing we could do is integrate with PayPal, which is fine. And by the way, I used to just use PayPal natively on Meetup. And then I actually built a, a Zapier integration. So every time we had a new PayPal sale, it would automatically add them into our active campaign. So that was actually a better way of, <laughs> of doing the integration. Um, however, like, I think one is like you can't buy multiple tickets. This could have changed since I last looked, but you cannot buy multiple tickets. That was one issue. Um, I couldn't have different ticket types. For example, now we have regular tickets and VIP and um, could not, I think this was an issue before, I believe this got fixed, but for a long time, and this might still be a thing, is that you couldn't pay for tickets through the Meetup app, uh, which was, that was actually the reason we stopped using PayPal as our, or the, the PayPal integration on Meetup as the, as the integration um, for ticketing. And now I actually use a system called Thrivecart, um, which is just a ticketing, or sorry, it's just a, a checkout system, and I'm just using it for ticketing. It's fine. We just export everybody into a, a Google Doc, into an Excel sheet, and we just do a check-in um, by name uh, that way. But it, I would love it if we had a better ticketing platform um, for for Meetup. And, and, and also, by the way, just like Eventbrite charges a processing fee or whatever, I'd be totally cool with paying a fee per ticket sale to Meetup. That'd be no problem at all. Okay, ability to charge subscriptions. This is uh, more personal, but I believe that if this was available, more meetups could utilize this and, and profit more. And again, meetup, you could take a percentage of our subscription sales. Basically, what I'd love to do is be able to charge a monthly fee. For me, I want to charge 10 bucks a month or 100 bucks a year, so that way our members can access our events for free if they're part of the membership. So instead of paying for every meetup, if they pay an annual or monthly fee, they get access to all of our events. And they get RSVP and then we could see, hey, they're a member, cool, let them in, right? We've been charging a subscription and we have members who pay a subscription, but it's been very difficult to figure out who's a member when they get to the door. And there's a lot of confusion for our members to know kind of how to get in for free once they're a member. I think this would be an amazing feature. And yeah, this could be a pro only feature as well to make more value for pro, I think that that would make sense. So I highly recommend this feature. The other one would be an online community feature. So things like being able to have better discussions, commenting system, um, you know, being able to have like uh, post blog content or videos from our meetups, stuff like that. 
uh, being able to have members within our community be able to communicate with each other. I know those are kind of there as part of the Meetup platform, but it's for the entire platform. It's not for the Internet Masterminds community. It's not for you know our specific community. So I think being able to have a real online community as well as an offline community would be great as a Meetup Pro user and a learning management system. So this is really specific to my own needs and this is probably not gonna be for everybody, but we film all of our events and, we, and part of charging for our membership is they also get access to the recordings of our events. So to have some way to be able to just host videos within Meetup and have that be part of the subscription would be amazing. That would be over the top valuable. All right, and then the other one that I know um, other Meetup Pro uh, users do is they have an e-commerce store where they're selling physical goods. I would love to be able to sell Internet Masterminds hats and T-shirts and stickers and whatever else. So if we had a store where people can buy you know, things associated to our brand, uh, that would be awesome, right? I know there's groups that do hiking. Maybe they could sell hiking gear and stuff like that, right? Um, some kind of e-commerce functionality. Again, this could be a pro-only feature, but it would bring a lot of value for pro users. Host online events. So I was looking through other platforms for building online communities, and I came across Mighty Networks. Mighty Networks has all the features of Meetup Plus More. It's actually a much more powerful platform for doing events and, and so on. They also do online events. The downside to Mighty Networks is that it does not help you grow your community. Meetup actually helps you grow your community through Meetup's users, which is amazing. But with Mighty Networks, it does not do that. So that's a huge downside to Mighty Networks. But one thing that Mighty Networks believes in, which I also believe in, is that we can also connect with people online, not just in person. So I think there's some sort of a way to host online events through live streaming online. It'd be a great way to bring our entire communities together. Again, as a pro feature, it makes sense. We're setting chapters up all over the world. They all are individualized within their city, but how do we bring everybody together, you know, together online? And if there was a way that we could host events and people could you know, comment, have discussions while we're having this online event and help people from other cities kind of come together and, and get to know each other. So I'm sure your team can, and I'm talking to meet up here directly, I'm sure your team can come up with a, a new creative solution to hosting online events for your, for your communities. So that way we're not just doing in person, but online as well. I think that would be extremely valuable for pro users and really justify uh, the investment for pro. And the other part here is that we have the feature now for managing groups, but how do we manage our chapter leaders? So I'm sure there's a lot of ideas that you guys probably have already around chapter leader management. Um, and I really like more features around that, right? How do I communicate with my chapter leaders? Maybe I wanna charge chapter leader. I actually do, I am doing this now as I'm charging chapter leaders to have a chapter. So that would be a great feature to have as well as be able to bill my chapter leaders to have their chapter or even have the chapter leader pay the 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 fee for the for the chapter right like if you guys are charging 30 bucks a month well hey we could pass that on to the chapter leaders um, and so on so i think there's a lot that could be done there for not just managing your groups but your leaders as well um, and there could be multiple leaders per chapter and so on if you guys are, are watching this and you, you appreciate some of these ideas and, and so on, uh, please do send this off to Meetup. I'm hoping people from Meetup are going to listen to this. I'm hoping that the CEO will watch this whole video. And um, I'll just say that, um, yeah, my, my decision has been to actually um, uh, discontinue my use of Meetup Pro. I don't think there's a lot of value in it. I would rather just pay the extra 10 bucks per chapter and just start 10 or 20 chapters at one time, watch them all grow, find chapter leaders as new members come in and then go from there. Not seeing very much value in being a pro member, especially at the scale that I wanna to scale to, which is 100 chapters. I just think it's just gonna cost way too much to use Meetup Pro at this point. I would hope if these features that I suggested were part of Meetup Pro, you know, it'd be a no-brainer, maybe, you know, maybe not at like $3,000 per month, but at 500 bucks per month, it would definitely be a no brainer uh, to use the platform with all these features. I'm sure you guys at Meetup have a whole bunch more ideas for Meetup Pro, but there has not been 
I believe any innovation since Meetup Pro came out, none that I've seen or heard of, it's been the same for a long time. I would love to see more innovation happening more fast. So I'm all ears and I hope everyone appreciates this video and understands more about what Meetup Pro has to offer and not offer and hopefully this changes in the future and if it does, I will make an update video and I'll throw that link in the description below if there is an update to this video. All right, thanks for watching and um, have a good day. Take care.